Hey guys, one happy diabetic here, and today's video is going to be a follow up on CGMS devices, and we're going to talk today a little bit about the disadvantages. So, what's probably the biggest disadvantage of CGMS devices? Well, probably the biggest. <laughs> That's right, guys. The biggest disadvantage to most people is the money associated with it. The initial fees for some of these devices can cost between $400 and $2,000 just to get the device. And monthly supplies can range anywhere between $5 to $10 a day. And that can cost up to $300 a month. That's a lot of money. And the other biggest disadvantage, too, associated with the money, is the lack of insurance coverage. It's sometimes very hard to get these devices covered by insurance. It's getting better, but it's not great. What I really suggest to you guys, if you really want a CGMS device and you're not getting that initial coverage up front from your insurance companies, make sure to follow through with appeal letters. And not just one, not just two, but until you get some coverage, keep on writing those letters. You know, a great movie like Shawshank Redemption kind of shows the value in writing those letters. Uh, I believe the same is true, too, with these insurance companies. And make sure your doctor's following up with those appeals as well. Accuracy can be another big disadvantage. They're not as accurate as your home glucose meter that you're using. Somewhere between the range of 21% to 9% off the accuracy of your home meters. And that can be a big difference when you're trying to adjust your insulin levels. Another big disadvantage, and it's not a big disadvantage, but another disadvantage is what are you going to do with all that information that you're getting? You might be used to just getting a couple readings a day, maybe six, eight, three, depending on how often you're testing your blood sugar. But then all of a sudden you're getting hundreds and hundreds of readings a day. What are you going to do with all that information? There might be a tendency for you to want to adjust your insulin levels based upon your reading on your CGMS device. Now here's a reason why not to do that. If it's not indicated for a correction, then why would you make any adjustments on your insulin levels or patterns uh, based upon your CGMS device? Now here's the reason why. Let's say your CGMS device is reading at a constant level of about 150 for three hours or something like that, and you want to make an adjustment. Well, the problem is, is that you don't know if that device is accurate. Are your readings actually 120 going for three hours? Are they 150 going for three hours like, your re like the readings are? Or are they 180? Always make sure to check your readings if you're going to be making adjustments with a finger stick because they're the most accurate and will give you the best results in the long run. Another thing to take into consideration with these sensors is the valuable real estate that it's going to be taking up on your body. Now, if you're an insulin pump user, you know how important sites such as your abdomen can be. So always make sure to know where your devices are indicated for use. Some are indicated for use in the back of the arm, while others are not. That could be a big benefit for you. So everybody, take care, good luck, subscribe, rate these videos, add a comment. I usually get back to all of them, and I hope you guys are having a great holiday season. Take care. One of the other disadvantages to CGMS... <laughs> This cat is crazy, yo.